Uh, yeah, the cast, well, uh, I mean, there's John Hawks, who, he's the linchpin in the whole thing, and I wrote the role for him, and it was kind of a won't take no for an answer type of thing. Uh, and I just hounded him until he agreed to do the movie. Uh, but I always knew this would be a low budget movie, so I wrote every role, almost every role, for a specific actor that I either knew personally or that I had some sort of connection to that I thought I could get the script to them. Um, and a lot of those people ended up being in the movie. Some of them, it didn't work out for one reason or another, but um, I think we found the right people in the end. But um, Deachin Lackman, who plays Jill, she's a friend of mine. I'd worked with her before. I wrote the role for her. I wrote the role for Ryder Strong, who was my former neighbor in Laurel Canyon in Los Angeles. Uh, Brett Jacobson, who plays Fontaine, I wrote the role for him. Um, Natalie Z was someone that I, I knew, a friend of a friend. Um, and then some of the other actors I was just fans of, and I, you know, we didn't even have a casting director. We just called up the, their agents and try, <laughs> tried to convince people to be in this movie by a first-time director, and yeah. It was not an improv movie at all. All the actors were, you know, word for word going from the script and it was just something we rehearsed really heavily and that was, that was part of the fun of it. You know, a lot of times with indie movies you don't have time to rehearse and with this one, I think I wrote myself a scenario where we had to rehearse because we were doing these long 20 minute takes. Uh, and I think uh, the actors just kind of found a rhythm and, and we had a lot of fun with it and they would come over to my house and we'd just sit there every day and go through the script and, and a lot of it uh, came together that way. The way it worked is we had three days for each of these five scenes. We would rehearse for two days with the whole crew on set and then we would uh, shoot on that third day as many times as we possibly could. We would just do the over and over and over. Uh, so we ended up doing about 10 complete takes uh, for each of the five scenes. And uh, there were some incomplete takes. Sometimes we did have to cut, but it was almost never because of the actors. It was usually some technical hiccup in trying to get 20 minutes uh, in one take, but the actors were just, they were spot on all the time, and there were, but chaos is going to happen in the middle of a 20 minute take. Actually, some of my favorite uh, moments were completely just happy accidents, as uh, Bob Ross would have said. They, actually, my favorite line of dialogue, which I won't even say what, because I don't want to call that actor out as having technically messed up, but in, he said the line differently than I wrote it, and it's so much better than I wrote it, and I wish I had written it that way, and it always gets a laugh, and it's not a bad laugh, it's just like, I'm getting all the credit for this great line when I did not write it that way at all. Yeah, John's seen it many times, he's been a big supporter of the movie. Um, I showed it to him uh, in a rough mix on, you know, from video projection just in our offices early on to get his input and he, he really loved it and he had a, a few good notes on the sound design process but aside from that and then he's seen it uh, probably two or three times projected on 35 with an audience and uh, you know, he tells me he likes it. I think he does. I think he's proud of it. and. Um, yeah, he's been a great supporter of the movie. I mean, he's one of these guys that just, um, he's very careful with his film, with his choices, and he's turned down a lot of big movies, and um, I think that's why everything you see John Hawks in, he's great. The movie's usually great, and even if it's not great, he's great in it, and he's just really selective, And but once he comes on board, he totally commits to it, and. You know, this movie shot over many years. Uh, it, it's been going on since 2012, and here we are in 2016, 
and uh, he's been on board the entire time and he's had to go off and make other movies. He went to Mount Everest and he went to do a season of Eastbound and Down and all sorts of, he probably made six movies while we were shooting this. And, um, but he always came back and was committed and uh, just a, a joy to work with. Yeah, that's an interesting question. The, I guess the whole writer-director thing versus just being a director. Um, I get, to me, it's the, it's the only way I could do it because uh, I just I don't think I could ever be. It's hard making a movie, and it takes a long time. And I don't think I could get excited about making a movie off anyone else's script. Uh, but it is hard, and it takes. I'm not a prolific writer. I mean. Um, my mom still jokes, uh, she can't believe that I am a writer now because I remember being, a li she remembers me being a little kid and you know, maybe in grade school I'd have some creative writing assignment where I had to write a story and I would just sit there for hours staring at a blank sheet of paper and I would say, I don't know what to write. And she always brings that up and, and like, and how can you be a writer? You would always say that. I'm like, it's the same thing now. I still do that and I don't know what to write. So it's, it's a hard process coming up with an original story. But to me, that's the only way I could imagine doing it. And, you know, maybe there's one or two books out there that I wouldn't maybe one day mind adapting. But for the most part, I think it's, and I'm a fan of a lot of my favorite filmmakers uh, adapt other people's work but for for me it just seems like this is the right way to go is to take my time and write an original story I mean we don't even like to talk about that though any sort of digital release because we're just trying to focus people on the importance of seeing a movie in the theaters and on 35 millimeter which is just becoming so rare these days and we did kind of take a hard line, draw a line in the sand and say, no, if you want to see this movie, you have to go to a theater, see it on 35 millimeter. I mean, even critics, so we, we, the New York Times, it doesn't matter who you are. We're not sending you any links. You've got to come see it in the theaters. Uh, but yeah, eventually we will go on and um, release it on home video. I mean, to me, that's that's the afterlife of the movie and that's where they should go on and be seen for a long time but we don't we didn't want to gloss over the uh the importance of seeing it in the theater but yeah hopefully uh later this summer we'll uh start showing up on itunes and all the other vod platforms after we've had a good uh run in theaters <laughs>